This is the second video for syntax and for our introduction to linguistics course where we are using the book Contemporary Linguistics Sixth Edition by O'Grady, Archibald, Aronoff, and Reese Miller. Uh, during the second section we will talk about the second half of chapter five on syntax and this whole section is about, well most of the section is about movement. What is movement? Movement in syntax is when a word or phrase moves from one position in the tree structure to another position. An example of movement is shown in the tree to the left. So this sentence is, will the dog fetch? That's when it's a question. And we are going to talk today about how it changed from the dog will fetch to will the dog fetch. And the idea is that, see this purple out arrow, moves that word will from the specifier of um, the I bar to the specifier of the C bar. Why do we want to represent it as movement? Well, movement allows for a more consistent structure. So think about sentence one and two. Sentence one, the dog will fetch, and sentence two, will the dog fetch. Without movement, we would need two completely different structures, like these two structures. In sentence one, see how the NP is the specifier of the IP. So the dog is the specifier of the IP here with the noun phrase. And then sentence two, the NP is the specifier of the verb phrase. So the dog as becomes the specifier of, of the verb phrase, including the word fetch. And will sits up here with in the I bar. So uh, we want to move towards something that is more consistent than this. So we don't have to have completely separate trees. For, for sentences that are so closely related to one another. So these are the same uh, tree structures as in the previous slide, but um, we, it's just that we can talk about it a little bit more. Without movement, we need two structures, and the problem is it's not clear how the structures relate to one another. So the solution to the problem is movement, is to have an underlying structure and a surface structure. So movement allows the same structure for both sentences, as it's going to show on the next slide here. So now we have sentence one, the dog will fetch, and sentence two, will the dog fetch. Movement allows the same structure for both of the sentences. Now we have um, the dog as the specifier of the IP in both of the sentences. You see that? the dog, the noun phrase the dog is the specifier of the IP in both of these sentences. And one difference between sentence one and two is that in sentence two the auxiliary just moves. And so you have a new sentence with the auxiliary moving. So note, note this note at the top. Assume from now on that all sentences have a CP above the IP. And that is necessary in order to be able to carry on with these movements to make questions. So um, in the past, we were looking at IP and just saying that that meant sentence. And I think it's still fair to say that, 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 that um, you can translate that in your mind in an introductory class to just think that IP, it means sentence. But then we are going to add this CP on uh, this complement phrase above that, give, allowing for a specifier position for the auxiliaries in questions. So in sentence two, the verb will moves from I to C, and this produces the correct word order, will the dog fetch. And it also creates a pattern that you see um, whenever you're moving auxiliaries to create, to create questions. So this is a pretty um, solid pattern where you have a CP and then an IP that's going to a specifier, one, one or another, that goes to I bar that has an auxiliary and then has a verb phrase next to it where the auxiliary will moves from I up to C in order to create a question. And that's what that purple line is. And then it also has a little T right there underneath the I. And that just means trace. Um, that's our indication that there was something and it moved to somewhere else. So doing it this way creates what we call a deep structure and a surface structure. All sentences have an underlying structure called the deep structure. And some sentences undergo movement. Not all of them do, though. 
and the structure after movement is called the surface structure. So deep structure, then movement, then surface structure. Um, or deep structure is equivalent to the surface structure when no movement occurs. The reason for this, the reasons for this are really beyond the scope of the class. But what's important to understand is that the structure before any movement occurs is there. So here's an example of, this is the same example, but it's of deep structure and the surface structure. So here's the structure of sentence two before and after movement. So the deep structure on the left is the dog will fetch. And then the surface structure becomes will the dog fetch. And that's what you actually say is will the dog fetch. fetch. And here's the structure of sentence one. With movement, we can make a connection between sentence one and sentence two. Sentence one and sentence two have the same deep structure, right? So sentence two is will the dog fetch. Sentence one is the dog will fetch. The deep structure of sentence two is the same as the deep structure and the surface structure of sentence one. Now we've established why we use movement. Intuitively, sentence one and two appear to be related. The dog will fetch and will the dog fetch seem to be related to each other. Will a dog fetch is actually a question, needs a question mark right there, but movement allows us to establish that relationship because they have the same deep structure. So there's the steep, deep structure for both sentences one and two. And the idea is that you do this subconsciously in your head, not necessarily that you start with this sentence uh, consciously and say the dog will fetch, and then, oh, I need to make a question out of that and turn it into will the dog fetch. No, but subconsciously, when you're creating a question, you're pulling this uh, deep structure from your, from your mind to be able to create the question, will the dog fetch?